So 2009 Ford Fiesta 1.6 petrol. Um, it's time for the cam belt change. Um, it's done 100,000 miles just about, 160,000 kilometers. And I think the recommended interval is 80,000, so it's slightly overdue. So here we are, I've been putting it off for a while, but finally got around to doing it. Right, so I, this is uh, the approach I'm taking here is for the amateur mechanic, which is me really, but I've done a number of these Ford units before, namely my Puma and the ZTEC um, Amondeo. And there are a couple of things that are easy to do, but it's just a question of where do you start? And if you can see a detailed view, overview of how it's done, it's going to make life a lot easier and give you confidence to have a go, okay? Professional mechanics won't like this because it's too slow for them, but this is not for them. This is for people that want to have a go themselves and don't want to pay the three or four hundred quid it costs to get it done in the shop, right? So I'm going to go from left to right at the things you're going to need, all right? So first thing, you know, when you get down to the bare bones of it, you're going to need to be able to hold the crankshaft steady in the right place to undo the bolt. And I've done this on a couple of Fords and I haven't been prepared. And I'm going to tell you that um, damper pulley bolt on the main crankshaft has to be removed to get the timing cover off. And it is mighty tight. It is something, if you haven't got one of these, what this does, this thing, it goes in the, um, you remove the starter motor and you bolt this on in place using the same mounting bolts as the starter. And then you, slide, you engage that, um, slide there, it's on the slide there, look, and you undo the bolt and you engage that inner tooth on the starter, on the starter ring, and then tighten everything up, and that locks your crankshaft so it can't move. If you can't lock your crankshaft, don't even bother trying to get the, um, the damper bolt undone unless you've got a really good um, impact driver. But bear in mind we're doing a camshaft, camshaft belt change here, so you're going to have to really hold it still in the right place and there's a timing pin I'll show you in a moment so you set the position, you lock it, then you undo the bolts so we'll go through that in detail but you'll need one of these, it's 20 quid I buy these, I bought this and I'm, I'm just going to put it back on eBay for a few pounds less than everyone else with good shipping and it'll disappear anyway so I'm only going to own this for a few weeks hopefully and then it'll be gone this one's a laser one, it was about 18 pounds from Amazon arrived the next day alright so that's the crankshaft locking tool you can see down there if you want to search for it yourself you can just free frame that and then um, look that number up okay yeah in tandem with that I really don't think you might get it undone with a standard ratchet spanner but I think to get that bolt undone you should consider if you need or borrow a breaker bar to get a really good swing on it to get that bolt out it's a one-use bolt and it's very very tight you might be all right you might be stronger than me but if you've got one of these handy, it might make it easier, okay? So just bear in mind you might need a breaker bar. Right, this thing is a camshaft locking tool. When you've got the top dead center set on the crankshaft, you then fit this tool over the crank camshaft sprockets. They are specific to your engine, but they're easy enough to find online. And most Fords, um, my old Puma for example had one, is this is the, this kit also comes with the timing pin now that timing pin, you carefully unscrew a blanking plug in the back of the engine, we'll see this later, and you hand screw this timing pin in and then you turn the crankshaft clockwise until it touches this pin and you'll feel it go tonk. It doesn't overdo it obviously or spin it fast, but um, when it's in that position, contact with this pin, especially machined to a machined flat on the back of the crankshaft, and then that will be top dead centre. All right, so that's where you lock it with the locking tool. So if you haven't got one of these, you'll need it. So don't start unless you've got one of those. I'm not sure what the other two bits of metal in there are. Um, they might be for slightly different engine models. We'll find out when we get there. But that was uh, 17 pounds this tool and you need it. So just to recap, you need the crankshaft locking tool and the camshaft locking tool. While we're in there, we're gonna fit a water pump. This is a Circle one, Sokolai. Chocolate, that one. They've got pretty good press, these water pumps. While you're in there, you might as well change it. 80, 90,000, it's gonna go soon. You don't wanna go through the whole rigmarole again. That was about 32 pounds. Don't buy a cheap one from eBay. Buy a known brand, trust me. I've had water pumps that have lasted literally 20,000 miles, and it's like, you know, they're 60% of the cost, and they last a third as long. 
you work out the maths or a quarter as long even they're terrible so get a good quality uh, water pump if you're going to do it you might as well change the water pump there's a gasket and everything else inside the box we're going to have to drain the fluid down but i'm show you how to do that anyway it's not it's not difficult now we've got a Deco timing belt, it's a middle of the range one but it should be fine for what we want um, obviously a timing belt kit, so in there it's high tenacity that's what we like, that's what we've got isn't it, doing this ourselves um, Yeah. so you've got your tensioner pulley, sprung loaded tensioner pulley there, sorry um, timing belt and in there there's a couple of bolts, I'm guessing I just need one of those two bolts they're the beastie bolts which are quite hard to undo, very high tensile very tough bolts done up to a very tight torque. Can't remember what the torque is, but we'll go through that. But it's a lot, all right. And without that um, bolt, there's no keyway on the actual crankshaft pulley. That bolt is. Um, where am I lying there? I'm not sure if there's a keyway on the pulley, but I got a feeling that bolt, just the compression force of that bolt, holds it in place. So it's got to be tight, okay? There you go. So yeah, that's the kit. And then finally. When we put it back together, a new uh, auxiliary drive belt. One of the, um, well, interesting enough, when I came first to change it on my Fiesta, I noticed that um, <laughs> I couldn't work out how to untension it, how to remove the tension. And there is no tensioner. This is a stretch fit belt. And there's supposed to be a little Ford. Um, if you buy this belt in America, you get a little metal thing that goes on the crankshaft pulley. And then you line it up and then hook the pulley over this metal pressed tin thing. And when you turn the crankshaft, it it stretches the belt and puts it over onto the uh, onto the grooves in the pulley. But in the UK and Europe, you don't get that tool, um, so I haven't got one. So I'm hoping I'll be able to get it on just by improvising with something. But yeah, if not, you'll find out um, through my antics that I was an idiot to do it that way. So there's the um, auxiliary drive belt. Need one of those. So just to recap, that's that's all the stuff we've got to go in the. To do the job so let's get going so step one loosen off the radiator cap so we've got to drain the coolant so front front right hand side of the back of the radiator you can do this on 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 the axle stands just grab this clip and move it back and then pull the hose off okay i won't do it now because my camera will get wet and then catch i'm catching the antifreeze in a bucket or the cooling solution it's gonna if it's bitty i'll filter it and i'm gonna reuse it because it's expensive so that's draining the coolant. So coolant is drained. Remember to connect the hose, you might as well do it straight away, then you won't forget later, will you? This cover here, underneath the crankcase pulley, or the crankshaft pulley, should I say, is held on by two um, screws up in there, down the side. I don't know if you can see them, there's one there, and the one at the front, it's just two screws. They can be taken off with a flat blade screwdriver, but they're very tight, or you might want to use a, a five millimeter hex driver, i.e. Allen, Allen bolt driver to take those two bolts out. So I'm gonna do that now. Yeah, there's those screws holding that cover on. It's actually not hex, it's a T25 driver. You need to get those two screws out. And there is the cover that's been removed there, okay, with these two screws, all right. So after you disconnect the battery, it's necessary to remove the starter the way I'm doing this. On the 1.4 um, engines and the diesel engines, the starter is a bit more accessible. It's on the right hand side, front of the engine, looking from the front, and there it is. You can see there's that bolt there in the middle. Uh, sorry, that bolt there in the middle, and that metal bracket, and there's two other bolts, and one round the back there, that one round the back. And I'm thinking that starter will then slide back out of the way, I hope. Well, I'm going to have to retrieve the whole thing and remove the whole star. If we can slide it back far enough to get the locking plate in, then we're in business. So I'm going to take those three bolts out now to hold the starter in place. Disconnect the battery. Obviously the earth lead. It's a safe one to do. Yeah, so the starter has been undone. Three bolts. You can see the end of the starter there being pushed back that direction to make enough room to put the, the locking plate in. You can see it there. Hold on with the bolt at the top, the bolt at the bottom, and the centre bolt, centre bolt is a slide with the crankshaft locking peg on it, okay? So it's all locked in position, ready to undo the main crankshaft bolt now. So just zoom out to see where you are. This is where you are at the front of the car. Okay, so the car is now jacked up, and underneath the engine is supported. 
like so. You see there's a load spreader, piece of wood to stop. You know, if you're doing this with a trolley jack or something else, you're gonna have to support it, but do something to spread the load on the bottom of your crank case because it's alloy, it's quite thin, and it won't like having a sharp metal end of a jack or a axle stand or something, so you have to spread the load. But you just need to support the engine because um, above here, is this engine mounting arrangement there. That thing lurking underneath the coolant header tank, okay? So that's got to come off to get to where we need to be because we've got to uh, remove the things underneath to get access to the belt, okay? So that's got to come off. So the engine has to be supported. Um, the coolant tank itself, that comes up and away, uh, swings up and out of the way. Um, you can see there's a little bit of coolant left in it, but not much because the system's been drained as we did earlier. And if you look in there, you can see one clip pushes through the coolant tank uh, and locks onto the coolant tank. So you have to pry that back and lift the coolant tank. And there's another one over here. There, right next to the filler cap. Can you see that one down there? That thing in the middle of the picture at the moment. They come off and lifts over. I'm hoping that this air conditioning pipe will not be in the way otherwise it may be necessary to undo that bracket and just gently move the pipe don't pull it too far because it's um it might might crack your air conditioning seal at the other side okay so i'm going to remove i'm going to lift the tank up out of the way and using a spanner obviously there's three bolts on top of that engine mounting that thing where that bolt is in the middle that bolt is in the middle and the final one underneath the tank have to come off and then that engine mounting will lift off so there we've got it with the uh, coolant tank swung back out of the way and down here you can see I've actually was the plan was to remove this one and this one and then that one but that one was a real pain it's turning I think there's a nut underneath and it's through a rubber mounting so in the end what I've done is remove these bolts here this is one here one down the bottom and then one down there you can see it slips slightly but that's what I've done so I'm going to take off this whole assembly including the rubber mount and the support bracket and the bracket from the engine okay so that's what I've done um, they're quite tight those nuts they um, take a lot of winding out but they're not too bad there's the engine mounting removed from the top of the engine that assembly there and those nuts and bolts okay So it's necessary to take off the timing cover, this plastic cover. It's held on by bolts here, 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 and down throughout the actual area of the cover. The small good one's round by the water pump. I think it's necessary to take the water pump pulley off. I'll let you know in a moment, but I think that's the case. But they're eight millimeter headed bolts. I'll take a picture of the timing cover when it's off so you can see where exactly where the bolts are, then you'll know where to go feeling for them. It's tricky, but not impossible. There's the water pump pulley removed with four nuts and hold it on. You just have to wedge a bar between the heads of the nuts while you'll turn the third one to stop the pulley turning but it's the water pump pulley's been removed. Taking out the bolts that hold on the timing cover as many as I can without removing the pulley. I had to take the water pump pulley off as we mentioned but down there is the main crankshaft pulley. That one there I'm pointing at now and before we undo the main nut on that you can't get this cover off with this um, pulley in place but you can't loosen that pulley and take that pulley off until the engine's locked at top dead centre, okay? So, necessary to pull this cover back so you can get the locking tool on once you've removed as many bolts as you can. And as I say, I'll, make a pic I'll take a picture of this so you can see where all the fixings are in it. Um, so, we're going to have to take this stud out because at the moment that stud is in the way of pulling that back. So, it's got a um, reverse torx. Well, I don't know what they call those things. Anyway, it's a... What size is it? There you go, it's one of those. It's an E11, okay? So that's an E11 socket to take that, that stud out. So the stud is out, the stud's out, and now um, to get this off further, we're gonna have to uh, remove these two bolts on this alternator bracket. The alternator is slung onto there, look, with those two bolts, here and here. And then down in there, we have two bolts underneath to remove this whole assembly. Once that's off, this cover will be, uh, be able to pull that back and then put the locking on the camshaft. Right, we've taken these two bolts out of the alternator mounting and the engine support bracket there, that thing. 
And now we're moving around, looking at the front of the alternator, going to remove this bolt, going to loosen this nut, and then I'm going to remove that stud, and that will allow the whole thing to drop away, out of the way for me. Hopefully. <laughs> well, here's an update. <laughs> it's taking me longer to film this than it is to actually do it. Um, yeah, so two bolts underneath there, then the alternator off, just as I said, and then I pulled the alternator forward to make that gap. You can see that? And I discovered another bolt down, down in there. Can you see? I'm half undone already. And now this is coming loose with that bolt out. So pull the alternator forward on the bottom bracket. You don't have to undo it. I didn't anyway, it just came forward quite easily. And then when I've taken that bolt out, this will be removed. All right, so yeah, it's been a slot. There you go, as promised, that's what it looks like. That's the uh, timing cover. You can see where all the fixings are. Be easier if I turn around this way so you can see the top being the top, wouldn't it, in your picture. There you go, that's the timing cover. And there's the engine support mount bracket and also the alternator bracket. It's fastenings, okay. And that's what it looks like with the uh, covers removed. So you didn't need to uh, remove the pulley to get that cover off, I was mistaken. It comes off once, once you've got that main support bracket with the alternator on it uh, removed, then it just all slides out nicely. And you can see there's our belt. Doesn't look a bad nick really, does it? I suppose, I don't know how you tell whether it's suddenly going to let go on you or not. So there's our water pump, which we're going to replace. There's the belt we're going to replace. And there it is all down there. So next step is to lock the timing in the correct place. I've got to find that uh, hole into which the timing pin screws, haven't I, and show you where that is. So that's the next thing. Okay, so this is the timing plug, the timing pin plug out the back of the engine. It's located down round under there at the back behind the crankshaft. Um, it's a 10 millimeter head. It's the only one in that region with a 10 mil head and it comes out and what you do is you rotate the crankshaft clockwise until these L's here around for about 10 o'clock. That one will be about 11 o'clock and that one will be about nine o'clock actually. So probably about 20 degrees left. So about 30 degrees on the crankshaft. Then you hand, hand put in, only hand tighten this, the timing pin, which I showed you in the kit when we started. It, it goes in replacement at this bolt. And you carefully turn the crank cut shaft clockwise, clockwise from the end of the crankshaft, the spanner on it, until you hear it go tunk, it will lock. You don't put a lot of force on it, just gently come up to the stop and you hear it hit the web inside the engine. Now the engine at the top dead center, and you can see now over the front of these crankshaft pulleys, I've locked them together by fitting this locking tool onto the um, onto the pulleys to stop them moving. Otherwise, when you cut the belt, the spring tension in all the valves will make you shoot round and you'll have a right timing issue on your hands then, okay? So that's what you do. So the next thing to do, I believe, is to, uh, is to lock the crankshaft using the locking tool where we took the starter out. So the next thing to do is engage the locking tool in the crankshaft which engages in the ring gear for the starter so that we can then undo the bolt on this pulley down here. You can see it's got a spanner on at the moment but that pulley is the next thing that's got to come off. Okay, You can see the plastic cover is still there over that part so um, that's why I thought it was all one piece but it's not, it's two pieces. There's a the top half which comes off and then the bottom half and don't bother taking the bolts out the bottom half, as I did. It was a fiddly squeezing in behind the crankshaft pulley to get those M uh, 8mm headed bolts out. I needn't have bothered actually, I could have just waited until we take the crankcase, uh, crankshaft pulley off. Till we take the crankshaft pulley off. The next step is to lock the crankshaft using the crankshaft locking tool. Okay, so the crankshaft pulley damper pulley is off and the cover that goes over the bottom of the uh, the plastic cover that goes over the bottom of the crankshaft pulley inside between the engine and the pulley is also off and now we just have to remove the tensioner to remove the belt it says in the instructions to rotate the tensioner arm around and then put a pin in to detension the belt before removal but 
it isn't that easy. The new one has got fitted with a new pin, so I'm just going to cut the belt, okay? Yeah, that's the bolt that came out the end of the crankshaft pulley, very, very tight. I had to buy an 18 millimeter socket because all my socket sets and all my tools go straight from 17 to 19. 18 seems such um, a slightly unusual size, so I had to go and buy a impact socket, and you do need this long bar. Took a full body swing on that bar. The, the bolt that came out is a standard right hand thread, so you just turn it in an anti-clockwise direction to undo it. Okay, they're not stated in the manual, but that's what you have to do. But it's very tight. So now it's time just to remove the uh, cam belt tensioner. It's that pulley down there. Just undo that central bolt. I cut the belt off, as I said, just to make it easy. Uh, it goes without saying that that bolt in the end of the crankshaft pulley is a stretch bolt, so you have to put a new one in, and it's very tight to put back as well. Um, so now we're onto the water pump. Here's the replacement water pump. Mine's not leaking, but might as well. You can see that's the bolt pattern that we've got. Now if we just swing over here to the actual engine. Yeah, there's the water pump. So we've just got to remove those bolts, take the water pump off, clean up the face and fit the new water pump. It shouldn't take too long. Okay, so the new water pump is fitted. It's probably not necessary to fit any um, sealer, but I did put a smear of silicon engine sealer on the, on the water pump gasket just to make sure. Um, torque the bolts down, don't tighten them all down until you put the new timing chain tensioner on. Timing chain, timing belt tensioner, living in the past. Yeah, and then torque them down, So because otherwise it might distort the housing slightly, because that, that timing chain, uh, timing belt tensioner is, is held on by a bolt which goes through the, the uh, water pump housing, okay. And when it, there's a tang on the tensioner which fits into a recess, it'll only go on one way. And then you fit the belt into position, noting the direction. We'll go through that in a moment. And when it's all the belt is rooted correctly, you pull out that pin and that releases the tension on the tensioner. It spins around and provides the tension for the belt. So we're, we're getting close now, you know. Not far. It's um main part is over. You can still see the uh, retainer is holding the camshafts in position. So nothing is moved, so I can just slot that belt straight back on. And then when it's back on and tensioned, I can uh, remove the crankshaft locking tool and rebolt the starter, starter in position, okay? Now, um, those M8 bolts are no issue on the, on the water pump. There's one round underneath the pulley housing, under the bearing part under there, which is a little bit awkward to get to, but with a long eight mil socket, you should be fine. So I think we're pretty much ready to put it back together. Um, the reassembly video is not going to be that detailed, A because I'm in a hurry and B I think now you've taken it apart your imagination uh, should let you put it back together uh, with no problem at all. The one thing that I do have to do is tighten down the engine uh, pulley bolt which is extremely tight. I'll, I'll um, I'll put a note as to what the torques are at the end if you're interested. I'll just photograph the torque table, but it is tight. I've done one before, only one, but it has to be extremely tight. It's the only thing that's holding. In the manual it says that there is a, a key keying that pulley in position, but there isn't. That bolt is the only thing that stops that pulley spilling on the, single, on the, on the uh, crankshaft. There's just a cylindrical boss there and a cylindrical hole in the pulley itself. So that's that. and. Uh, yeah, let's get the thing back together. So the crankshaft pulley bolt comes in M12 and M14 sizes, so you need to check which size you've got, and there's the Torx. So the one I've got is an M12. So you tighten to 40 Newton meters, up there, which is quite loose actually. And then you angle tighten on a third and 90 degrees, and I'll show you what I've done just to help me with that. There, you can just about see that. I've, um, just in case the spanner slips off or I get confused, I've put a tip X mark on the shoulder of the bolt, that washer part is part of the bolt and on the pulley so I can judge when it's gone around 90 degrees okay just in case it, I get confused and don't tighten it far enough or over tighten it so a uh, tip X mark is recommended but up to you. Okay so she's back together the um, crank shaft pulley bolt has been tightened I have removed the uh, locking tool from the crankshaft at the moment and I'm just going to rotate the crankshaft uh, anti-clockwise a bit and then go clockwise again 
and just make sure the crank still hits the timing pin. Remember the timing pin we screwed in the back down there? Just make sure it just touches up against the pin and just make sure the locking tool fits again just to double check that I've got the timing right. Then I'm going to take the timing pin out and rotate the engine by hand a couple of times just to make sure there's nothing weird going on. So don't forget to take the timing pin out which we put in which is down behind there, right behind the crankcast, crankshaft pulley in that section down there. Okay, can't focus. Can I focus? No, I can't. But so now, um, once I've done the rotation, I'll take the timing pin out, do the rotation. I'm then, then I'm going to remove the locking tool, um, put all this back on as reverse uh, procedure to taking it all off and, and doing it. And then the last thing that we'll cover, which will be in a, a while, will be just checking. Um, how we managed to get that stretch auxiliary belt on. Do you remember that auxiliary belt is is uh, does no has no adjuster? It's just a stretched uh, item. So I'm going to have to make up or improvise somehow to stretch it over because I don't have the Ford tool at the moment. I may be disappointed. I might have to get the Ford tool, but at the moment I'm planning to do it without the Ford tool. Okay. So that's the timing belt complete. Um, I'll have a little chat afterwards, but um, if anything comes up, I'll. Uh, I'll let you know, otherwise next thing will be the uh, replacement of the auxiliary belt. All right. So the engine mounting's back on, that's that bit there. There's two bolts, there's one bolt under there, one bolt under there, and don't forget, where is she? Is she there, can we see it? Scoot round here. Don't forget that fella down there in the middle of the picture now. It's all a bit dark, isn't it, but you can see it. Yeah, don't forget that, that fella down there on the front. See him? Right in the middle of the picture now. Let's see if I can focus it. No. So now it's time to move this cover back into position and then put the bolts in around the peripheral, all these bolts. Okay. That one there is a long one. At the top. The top middle one's a long one. It's starting to get dark, but there's <laughs> no much difference because I'm doing it by feel. So, the uh, auxiliary water pump drive belt pulley, drive pulley going on with the four small bolts. You have to hold it in place by putting a screwdriver between the heads of the bolts and tightening the rest up. So I'm putting the pulley back on. Obviously it goes down there somewhere. And that little bit down there. Sorry about the lighting. So, timing pin is removed. Remember you to remove it, okay? Timing pin is removed. Remember to remove your timing pin. So she's all back together. Just ticking over now. It's been raining, so there's a little bit of water on the engine. New oil. Uh, put the old coolant back in, filtered it. Remember to put the uh, timing pin blank and plug back in. Uh, new, new auxiliary belt, which you stretch over. There's plenty of videos online showing you how to fit that belt, but it seems to be running fine. Everything's okay, so yeah on the road. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, um, we might encourage you to have a go yourself. It's a bit daunting the first time you try it. Um, that nut on the end of the crankshaft is pretty tight, so you do need a, a, a good quality 18mm socket, and you do need a long um, breaker bar. So subscribe down in the link down in the corner, and I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, find it useful. Thanks.